I'm Dr. Will Tuttle, and I'm here tonight at Plant Matter Kitchen in London, Ontario. I became a vegan in 1980 and uh, it was actually uh, after being a vegetarian for about five years. The motivation really of course for me going vegan was I became aware of the routine abuse of dairy cows and hens uh, for dairy products and eggs and so I became a vegan. I had actually gone vegetarian in 1975 when I uh, ended up walking with my brother on a pilgrimage to the farm in Tennessee, which was the largest hippie commune in the world back in 1975, and there was 900 people who were all vegetarians, and so I learned uh, there about the devastating effects of animal agriculture on animals and on people because most of the grain we're feeding to animals while people go hungry. My favorite meal at home uh, is uh, for breakfast a green smoothie and for lunch we have usually a wrap uh, which is basically a bunch of garden salad kinds of things like lettuce and sprouts and tomatoes and peppers and um, maybe a little walnuts or tempeh wrapped up in a tortilla and then for supper I just love uh, potatoes and vegetables or pasta or I love kasha actually various grains uh, couscous or brown rice so basically for supper we usually have some kind of grain and vegetable uh, kind of combination that my wonderful spouse Madeline uh, does the honors most of the year actually and I'm very lucky in that regard. Yeah, we have uh, a food forest at our house in Northern California. We were actually inspired by the Living Center here in London, Ontario. Just outside of London, uh, Chantry and Lorena have created uh, a beautiful food forest. And we visited here about five years ago, I guess it was, and saw what they were doing. And so we decided when we got our house in Northern California to create a similar kind of a thing. So we planted about 30 fruit and nut trees, uh, lots of herbs and vegetables, and uh, berries and things and we get a lot of food from our food forest. It's totally veganic. There's no animal manure or anything like that used and it works really great. Yeah. Okay, the difference between good food and good looking food. Yeah, I think essentially from my point of view um, good food is food that's not only vegan but also organic and GMO free. Uh, that is uh, also uh, without any um, artificial preservatives and chemicals, so it's a whole foods uh, kind of food. And it's also, as much as possible, local uh, as well. So it's local, organic, and even better, veganic, and uh, also uh, whole foods uh, and plant-based. And really, there's an inf endless variety of foods that we can create with those ingredients. I, I've coined the word herderism. Herderism is the mentality that basically underlies and permeates any society that is organized around herding animals or imprisoning animals for food. So we live in a herding society and the fundamental action in a herding society is abusing and eating animals. And so that leads to materialism, which is basically a way of seeing where instead of seeing beings, we see things. We reduce beings to matter. It is objects to be used, manipulated, impregnated, uh, and mutilated and killed. And so this shuts down our natural capacity to respect life and to make connections. So uh, herderism, unfortunately, is a wound, I think, that we've all endured by being raised in a society where we're forced from the time of little infants not just to watch adults eating meals of violence, but we have to eat that ourselves. And so we learn to reduce and repress our natural sensitivity, our natural uh, empathy, and our natural ability to make connections, which is really uh, essentially is intelligence. So materialism and herderism 
and a kind of dualistic way of being uh, of separation, of separating ourselves from nature, from animals, from each other. So veganism, from my point of view, is awakening out of herderism. It's developing a sense of respect for animals, for other human beings, for hungry people, for slaughterhouse workers, uh, and for future generations and ecosystems, and really for ourselves, and living the, as best we can to see beings rather than things. So it's nothing to be proud of, it's just coming home to our true nature and living according to our values. We all, in a way, love technology. It's what allows us to do interviews like this. It allows us to um, post them up on the internet and spread the word. But it's definitely a two-edged sword. Technology is also what allows us to create weapons of mass destruction and distraction. And it also uh, is horribly abusing animals. Uh, animals are now hyper-confined, and this, the mechanized system of animal agriculture is uh, horribly abusive to animals. So uh, I think it's not a good idea to become overly enamored of technology, and I think it's definitely not a good idea to think that technology will solve our problems. We need to solve our problems by going to a higher level ethically, and I also think that simplifying our lives so that we're growing more of our own food, so that we know how to repair things that we're using, uh, is a really good idea. So, uh, you know, we do have solar panels that we get all our energy from, and that's a, that's a form of what's called appropriate technology. So I'm kind of a, a fan or an advocate of appropriate technology, uh, which is not necessarily high tech. It's kind of medium tech in many ways, being able to um, not be overwhelmed by things that we're using that we have no idea how they operate. I think uh, being a vegan is a, is a big help in the sense that we're consuming foods that uh, are based on uh, sustainability, so organic plant-based uh, plant meals is very helpful for centering in general. But I think beyond that, you know, I, I meditate always at least an hour every morning and um, make it a point to also do some yoga every day and um, qigong uh, practices as well and tai chi very often. And, and get some exercise uh, also, and get into nature as much as possible every day, and take time with my spouse Madeline to uh, spend quality of time, uh, quality time with her so that our relationship uh, is uh, harmonious and we're taking time to cultivate the love that we have for each other. So uh, for me, it's a, basically a combination of meditation uh, and meditative uh, physical disciplines, also music. I, I try to play the piano every day. I find that that's very uh, helpful in just being a creative outlet. I try to write in a journal every day also, which I think is helpful for me anyway, to just kind of keep in touch with uh, what's going on and, and, and then take time also for, uh, if for spiritual study, uh, books that are uplifting and uh, help us to go more deeply. Uh, I think are also important. So uh, I think it's very important for everyone to take responsibility, not only for our physical health, but for our psychological and spiritual health. And that means basically taking time to care about the quality of our consciousness and to engage in inner listening, to just quiet the mind and listen within. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, The World Peace Diet essentially is a book that is focused on helping us understand that the only reason any of us is eating animal foods is because we're following orders that were essentially injected into us from the time we were little infants and they're not in our best interest. And that we can awaken out of that and move to a plant-based way of living which will not only liberate us and animals but ecosystems and future generations and a whole interconnected web of life. So the World Peace Diet is essentially about questioning the underlying assumptions about the nature of our, our um, society and seeing the big picture of the consequences of our routine and relentless mistreatment of animals for food and other products.